Good morning, good morning, good morning, you lovely lot. It is Thursday. This week's gone really quick. <laughs> it's Thursday. Um, just woken the boys up. I've been awake since, well, pretty much since Lee, Lee left up. Just gone seven. I did doze for a little bit, but I was back up again at kind of 10 to eight. Um, and then Kenzie got up and made me a cup of tea he had his breakfast and he's been watching some YouTube um, but it's now nine o'clock so I have asked him to get on with his work um, I'm trying to get Brendan up that can take anything you know from an hour to two hours of me nagging but uh, he will get out of bed he doesn't seem to have any work to do at the moment and that's probably because uh, he would have been about to break up for study leave next week um and start doing his exams so um yeah doesn't really have a lot to do but that's not to say he can spend the day sitting in his bed on screens and i know he's an adult he's 18 and all that jazz but as a parent of an 18 year old uh he still needs guidance and getting up is something he needs guidance with and uh, yeah, helping out around the house is important too. He's been helping me with things, helped me with cleaning the caravan as you saw and clearing some bits away. So he is very good like that. Um, once he's up, you just gotta get him up and moving. Uh, so yes, that's what I'm currently doing. <sighs> Shame me. Could have easily gone back to sleep. I really could have done, um, but I didn't. Uh, the tortoises have squished half a tomato on the floor, the bit they didn't eat, you know, like all the seeds. So I've got to clear that up. The house is pretty clean and tidy. The bathroom could do with a quick wipe over because I haven't cleaned it properly since Monday. Um, I am thinking that I did bury one of the buggies at the back of the caravan, which is probably not a good idea. Um, but then, I mean, uh, Julia, she mentioned naps and that had been going through my mind. Do I just bring them into the living room for naps as normal? But I think that's going to be confusing. And again, it's potentially spreading infection into an area that is, you know, I don't, I don't want to confuse things. Um, but the caravan has curtains and the caravan has a pull out bed. So there's, if you just unhook the table, pull out the rungs at the bottom um, from the wall and then push those cushions down flat, uh, that does turn into a bed. So potentially for naps, there's buggies and there's that area there. Thomas doesn't nap. Um... Finn will, but he'll happily sleep in the buggy in the garden if the weather's nice. Or, you know, he, he will sleep. He will sleep in the buggy. That's where he tends to sleep. Or he'll sleep on the beanbag somewhere. I mean, if he's tired, he'll sleep. So it's not like I have to find a really dark corner for him. He's, you know, he's quite happy to just fall asleep on the sofa. Um, you know, at times. So he could curl up on the sofa in here. He could curl up on a beanbag. Or, yeah, go in the buggy. Livy. Sometimes naps, sometimes doesn't. Oh, excuse me. And Ethan would usually go and lay down with me, um, which potentially he could do in the caravan. Uh, obviously, we won't be able to watch the telly at nap time or downtime, so I'm trying to think of an alternative. But we could use the caravan for downtime and... Um, because it's dark, I could then take the laptop in fully charged and could put some sort of children's programs on or a DVD. It's got it's got a DVD drive, like a CD drive in it. So they could have a bit of downtime in there with the computer. So there are options, but thank you for pointing it out because it's potentially something I could have missed and it is something that up until this morning I hadn't really made a full thought on but yeah needed to 
I've put a jump on and it's actually, when that sun comes out, it's actually quite hot. My eyes have done nothing but run all night long. Oh, which sounds silly. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Which sounds silly because you're asleep. So, you know, how could your eyes run? But I've woken up with sort of very itchy, crusty eyes. Um, pleasant, I know. You're welcome. Um, so maybe, I'm wondering if maybe it's been happening the last couple of days. I'm just feeling not quite right. And bearing in mind, I haven't got makeup on and haven't worn makeup for what, two weeks now. It's probably pollen related. I don't, I don't have hay fever or I never say I've got hay fever, but I have noticed that I'm blowing my nose a lot at the moment because it's getting bunged up. Um, and my eyes are running. So potentially a little bit of hay fever, maybe. Not enough to really cause me any issues, but just noticing there are some slight changes in my body. Um, yeah, so I just keep wiping my eyes. Right, cup of tea. Uh, I haven't got any dishes to do. That's all done, that's all clear. I do need to put a load of washing on. Um, print out some of Kenzie's work for today. Doesn't have a huge amount to do. He's still got some left over from the other day. Um, if I can encourage him to crack on with that, that'd be great. We're going to work on an English assessment together because it does require some deeper thought than I think he might do if he does it on his own. So I think I will just sort of facilitate that and see what he comes up with. And we'll do a draft. I'll write the draft of what he says so he doesn't have to write twice. And then we'll just read through his draft and look at where we can um, add other phrases, extend sentences. It's all to do with analysing Macbeth. So it's pre-exam type stuff for the next couple of years when he has to think about adding quotes and he has to think about justifying his comments and he has to think about extending his sentences and the vocabulary he chooses to use and picking out uh, quotes from the text to back up his thoughts, opinions and sentences. So yeah, I think I'll get him to recite to me what he wants to say. I will write it and then we will go over it again, but looking at where we can insert some of those sort of deeper thinking things, which is something that his teachers had said back in um, parents' evening, sort of earlier on in the year, that he needed to practice that. So I've said to him, I want to do that with him. And I think we'll do it on the computer where we can type it and then go in and edit it without having to rewrite the whole thing. Um, just, you know, go in and edit the paragraphs as we go along. So yeah, I think that's what I'll be spending my morning doing. He's currently going through his vocabulary list for this week, writing some sentences to go with some pictures. It's like a Pictionary quiz thing where there's emotions or the pictures depict something. And then he has to use the words from his vocabulary list to make a sentence about what he's observing on those pictures um, so that he's using the new vocabulary within a context to make sense of it. Um, and familiarising himself with those words. And then um, he has to do the online quiz. So I said, we'll do that and then it's all fresh in your mind and then do the online quiz. Would probably be a good idea. Right, I've waffled on for nearly 10 minutes now. Aren't you lucky, lucky ducks? You're so welcome. <laughs> right, I'm gonna go make this tea. subjects there. English literature, tech, 
French and humanities. I'm gonna go and work on those. I think it's time for us to have another cup of tea. I've done some more washing. Kenzie is studying some stuff about World War II. He has done quite a lot of his work. We've done music, we've done French, we've sent off his humanities work. We haven't done his tech yet. He's gonna do the quiz on that one. He's done that one. And then we've got that assignment today. So he's done about half of his work, I would say. This is what we have been trawling through, Macbeth. We have between us, because bless him, sorting stuff out like dissecting the English language is not his strong point, and I don't blame him. And in my lifetime, I've never needed it. I'm not gonna be some sort of literary god. I read a book, I enjoy it, that's the extent of. So, yes, um, he's now done that, so we can bin that one. Um, bin that one, and we've done that one. And he's done his French. He's just got one more bit of work to do. I've sent him outside for some fresh air. Hello, you. Are you getting some fresh air? You're going for a bounce. Uh -oh. <laughs> what time did you get up this morning? Four. Well, that's ridiculous time. Couldn't get back to sleep. That's horrible when that happens. Mm. Never fight me. I can bounce bigger than you. Hey, mm. I'm being blinded by the sun. Mm -hmm. I think someone needs an early night tonight, mister. You've been going to bed really late. I think that's the problem. No, I just suns in my eyes can't see. Oh. I'll fight you. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Oh, fight me. Yeah. Fight me. Yeah. Fight me. Yeah. Your hair's full of um, seeds. I'm going to grow into a plant. You're going to grow into a plant? Yeah. You're a pumpkin. Can't grow. see. Can't see. Yeah. Do you want a normal mother? Oh! Do you want a normal mother? Do something. Do something. Do something. Do something. Yay, he's playing. Have my stinky foot. Have it. No, I'm good. You want my stinky foot? No, I'm good. It smells like roses. It smells like roses. Yeah. Posies of toesies of roses. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm losing a sock! <laughs> ah, I've got your toes! <laughs> you can make me one if you like. What are you making? Chocolate mug cake? Ah. So you put your bowl on there and reset it, do you? Mm -hmm. And then you make... Do you want to show me what you make? That looks very tasty, Kenzie. Yeah. Can I have a taste, please? You've got a spoon. I'll have a little taste of your your lovely. Oh, it's hot. Sprinkles and cream, and it's what is it? Chocolate orange. Uh huh. It's not very chocolatey though. Um, no, it does look quite light in colour. Hmm. It is a bit rubbery. You're right, but then that's because it's cooked in the microwave. It's got rabies. Has not got rabies. <laughs> It's alright though, as a snack head, isn't it? Chili con carne for dinner. And some rice getting ready to boil. We have finally finished all of the work. Finally. Um, 
but I think he's actually done more and there was definitely more the last two days we've looked at it and we think some of the teachers put yesterday tomorrow's work up like over the last two days as well so I don't think he's gonna have really anything to do tomorrow hardly anything fingers crossed um I'm gonna crack on with some hoovering I don't know where today's gone we were up early <laughs> and it's now nearly four o'clock Lee's gonna be home in what 40 minutes 45 minutes <sighs> well the chili's done Kenzie's work is all up to date and submitted I've just hoovered thankfully the house isn't really messy I still haven't cleared up the tomato goop that the tortoises have left on the floor so I better do that um, Brendan's going to hoover upstairs for me. Kenzie's now going to relax, chillax for a bit, which he deserves. He's worked very hard today, bless him. Um, yeah. So the day's just gone. We haven't even been able to go out for a walk today. I did suggest it, but Kenzie said, no, I just want to get the stuff done. Um, so we haven't had our walk today, which feels a bit weird. doesn't feel comfortable in my head not having had that walk. But shmi, that's just the way it is. Don't like it, but it's the way it is. I could probably go with Lee after work. But I want to get in the shower and wash this mop. And I imagine if I get in the shower, I just want my pyjamas on and won't be bothered. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, I can't believe it's Thursday either. This week's just shot by really shot by. Maybe it's because I've had things to think about with the whole work thing. Um, you know, it's given me a focus for the week. I did see some pictures of the schools that have opened up in France. I mean, these are apparently photos. I mean, you can't trust, can you, that these are not photos from somewhere else or some other time that people have just jumped on the bandwagon and decided to use them out of context. I know that does happen. Um, but the staff are wearing masks and the children are, hold on. Brendan's about to start hoovering, so I'm just gonna pull the door to. <laughs> um, yeah, the staff are wearing masks and the children have got marked out big squares on the playground floor. Um, and there's a child in each box. Yeah, that picture made me want to cry. It's, it's not right. If you can't have children together, you don't have them in school or in childcare at all. It's, I appreciate people have to go back to work. We have to get the economy going and everything else. I, I get that. Especially for single parent families, I get that. But no, <laughs> that's not how we deal with our kids because all we're doing is pushing the financial issue now further ahead to a generation of children that have been so mentally traumatized by the coronavirus situation, being pulled away from families, extended families that, you know, they would spend time with, like Jasper would have spent one day a week with me um, and he hasn't done that since lockdown started, you know, kids that are looked after by the grandparents or stay with the grandparents who've got those really close bonds, you know, they've had that taken away for, well, we're on day 51, two, 52 now, so, and it's still gonna be going for a lot longer. Um, yeah, without mental health, without good mental health, life is kind of, it's gonna it's, it's gonna sound wrong and someone's gonna shout at me for this without good mental health life is nothing um and i don't mean if you've got poor mental health you know you shouldn't have your life that's not what i'm saying at all um i'm just finding a really hard way to word it um if you don't have good mental health your quality of life is affected if you don't have good mental health it affects you for years and years to come as somebody who had an amazing upbringing, who had fantastic family, an extended family, 
and had nothing bad happen to me in my childhood, uh, my genetic makeup or my sensibilities, my gentle nature was affected by other things, the news, things that went on in the world around me and affected me to the point where six years ago I was rubbish, pretty much couldn't function and have been living a life just coping with pushing these thoughts and things that affected me so badly to the back of my head and thinking I was a bit weird. Um, but it made me ill on a regular basis to the point where I couldn't hide these things anymore and had to find a counsellor. Um, and that's when it all started getting put in place. And that cost me hundreds and thousands of pounds in therapy for potentially three years, I think it must have been, all in all, three years. Uh, my appointments are £65 a pop. I think I started at 45 and it's gone up over the time. And I still have to dip into that when I feel I need to. It's an ongoing thing, but that's how long it took. Now, if you imagine the amount of people that couldn't pay for it, I mean, we struggled. If you think about how much that took three times a week at one point, um, at 45 pounds a go for a long time, um, at its worst, that was a lot of our income gone. So the financial stress that then put on us on top of it was hard, but I couldn't, I couldn't not have that treatment. So what I'm saying in a really long winded way is that pushing it, pushing this problem um, into a thing where we say people have got to go back to work and people have to, you know, the kids have got to go to places and this is how it's got to be to keep them safe is going to cause a mental health issue, which is going to fester and build and children are going to end up growing up with detachment and attachment disorders and feelings of uh, neglect or being pushed away or not being loved can have all sorts of problems relating to other people because they can't be touched whereas at least at home they can be the alternative is they're at home and they can be loved and touched and held but to go into a setting every day and not to be touched and held and someone having a mask over their face and backing away from you and going, don't touch that, it's dirty, it's just going to cause all sorts of issues. Um, and then those kids are going to need mental health support as adults. And that's going to cost the government thousands, millions of pounds for those that can't afford to do it privately. And it's another whole generation of people affected. I don't know what the answer is. But I don't think the answer is drawing squares on the floor in the playground at break time and telling the children they're only allowed to have one person in a box at a time. That was another eight minutes of me waffling. I did it this morning, didn't I? <laughs> Get myself on a rant about something. I don't know, what are your thoughts? I know my vlogs are getting quite political, but I think it's the situation we're in at the moment. I think if I... I didn't touch on these things I would not be blogging it um, thoroughly anyway I think I'm gonna go and have a shower the dinner is now ready people can just help themselves as and when they want it chilies in the slow cooker the rice is cooked sat on the hob just sitting there with a lid on it <laughs> it's all done uh, Kenzie's resting Brendan's hoovered upstairs for me he's just come back down with the hoover and put it away um, Lee should be home any minute. And yeah, I'll stop waffling now and go get in the shower, wash this floppy mop. Lee's just got home. It's nearly five o'clock. Um, I'm just about to dish up dinner. He has gone for a shower. Um, I am showered. I have washed and straightened my hair. Don't look quite such a scrag bag anymore. The boys are not yet hungry. So they'll have theirs when they're ready. Um, and I am making a cup of tea for my man. Well, for my whole family. But I always make more when he comes in. Um, after a hard day's work. 
you need someone to make you a cup of tea. Chilli, rice and cheese. I think it's time for me to relax now. To chillax on this day that has just vanished. Um, Lee heard, uh, not Lee, Kenzie heard back from one of his teachers on that last piece of homework we did together. And um, she's given him a grade six. She said she's incredibly impressed with the standard of work that he's been producing since he's been at home. And um, that she's given him some positive points and which is their reward system. And that she is sending a postcard home, which is also like a reward system. Obviously, I know how well he's done because I was there helping him with the homework. <laughs> That's how I know about it. But by helping him, I just mean that sometimes he gets to a point where the thought of writing or typing anything just is too much for him. And so it, he will do the minimal because it's easier and he's feeling a bit overwhelmed with work. So what I do sometimes is I say to him, right, I'll ask you the questions. You tell me the answers and I'll type it for you. So that's what I did with this one. He chose all the pictures. I put them on the thing while he made his cake. Um, and then I asked him about each picture of the camera that he was, he had to pick 15 cameras. So I asked him about each one. I said, who would this be of interest to? Who would use this camera? Um, what makes it, you know, unique? Typed what he said. And then I said, you like this camera because... And he gave me the reasons he liked it. And I said, and you don't like it because? And he came up with some negatives about it. And we did that for the, each of the 15 things. So he didn't actually have to type anything. Um, I just sort of scribed for him. Um, but the answers were all his. And it's kind of how we do it with, with Brendan. Brendan has a support worker there just to keep him on track and to be a scribe. And it's been working really well for Brendan, but Kenzie's not got a statement of education or a EHCP as they're called of now. Um, so he doesn't get that help. But it does show, doesn't it, what he can achieve if he does actually have to get it out of here and put it down on the paper. If he can get it out of here and somebody else then writes what he said or types what he said. Um, you know, it's interesting. It is interesting. Hmm. He'll never get an EHCP though, because he's not as disruptive <laughs> and they're really hard to get now. Whereas Brendan wasn't functioning in a class whatsoever. Um, so yeah, that kind of went for him in a way because it meant that he did get more support. But yeah, Kenzie doesn't like to make a scene, so he suffers quietly. And uh, now he's got me here supporting him through it. You can see that he can achieve a lot more just with that extra little bit of help, someone guiding him and asking him the right questions. And, you know, it's a shame really, but I guess when you've got a class of 30 odd children, you can't focus that on one child. Anyway, I'm not getting into a big old waffle now. I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching and stay safe.